Hello there, my name is Bernadette and I'm a ceramic artist with Cork Craft and Design. You are listening to the sound of me scraping some dry clay from the surface of the vessel you see here named the galley head. Uh, my work has always revolved around themes of landscape and our human connections to it. So let me tell you a little bit about my creative process. As with all outdoor activities in Ireland, it begins with waiting, waiting for a good weather. So with a little warmth and a light wind, we launched our kayaks from Long Strand, aiming to circumnavigate and see the lofty heights and dramatic waters of Galley Head. So paddling and watching, photographing, paddling some more and absorbing my journey, I bring all this experience back to the ceramic workshop. The process of design for me varies. It can start with an idea or a thought, or it can start with a piece of timber that interests me. I may be inspired by something in my surroundings, the crest of a wave, a crane, in Cork City Docks. I take time to consider each piece of timber that I will use. With the tables that I made for this exhibition, I was inspired by the timber, an offcut of native view, which was left over from a previous project. The tabletop pieces are book matched which means slicing one piece of timber in two and jointing together. I find each piece evolves during the process of making. Often Thank you. 
less or they're certainly very aware of this um, behavior. So I think that uh, the other thing that they have done the informal guys is that they are in the real Hi, my name is Emer, and I've created a collection of copper earrings for the Sustainability Showcase Exhibition. Um, the earrings are made from recycled copper wire that I've sourced from electricians. The copper wire is scrap wire, and the amber beads are from <coughs> old amber bracelets. Amber lace bracelets are used for pain reduction, and the um, the ability of the amber to work um, wears out after a few months. So there's lots of these amber bracelets that are um, can be recycled. The beads can be. Um, the limpid seashells are picked from the beach by myself. Um, I pick up old seashells that are washed up on shore. Um, there's lots of these in Ireland on every single beach. I pick the orange and brown tone limpets just to match the copper wire. Um, so what I do is I try to uh, wash the copper wire, I cut it, I just do a lot of wire work and I mould them into shapes for earrings. I hammer them and some aren't hammered um, and I just make them into uh, dangly earrings such as hoops and marquee style with the amber beads. I'm on Point Road Night Beach in Anglesey, Australia, and I'm playing with the clay on the beach that's been exposed by the tides. I know that my sculpture won't last. This is a very special experience. I have never seen terracotta clay exposed on the beach like this before. It's red and malleable, not yellow and friable like the sand, and it feels very special in my hands. I hope you enjoy sharing these minutes with me as I speak about my art journey, which starts here.
where I sense the environment reaching out and connecting with me. I'm aware of my heart beating. This body of work is called Just Don't Hold Too Tight and is a series of roses made from recycled light bulbs, dried petals and broken glass from a previous project. Conceptually, it's about how holding on to the past can be dangerous, even while memories are beautiful. The flowers are remade by sewing together dried petals. I collect them mainly from the reduced to clear section of supermarket flowers. I am a contemporary maker using materials including glass, paper, textiles and flower petals to create objects, installations and imagery. The narrative of my work concerns that which is ephemeral, delicate and intangible. Photography also plays an important role capturing the interaction of light and shadow with objects and for documenting assemblages and moments. For a long time I've been interested in the use of our local materials um, for craft and in traditional times past um, they were used quite extensively in rural areas um, to make all sorts of useful objects, mainly baskets but various rope making and chairs, um, seating um, and amongst various. That the, the three materials I have used um, in this exhibition, um, rushes, um, fionon, um, grass, and then other wild hay and grasses um, were used extensively, um, often in rope making, um, um, as amongst a few other crafts. And it was very much at a time when people did use um, their local um, materials and very little was bought in. So that sustainability aspect has always fascinated me. Hello, my name is Eleanor Cahalan and I am a wood carver and sculptor. I like to work with cast off pieces of wood from other makers if possible, but I also buy my wood directly. If I source wood directly, it is local so that it is native Irish wood, which in some cases has fallen naturally. Yew is one such example that has a tendency to fall in storms due to its shallow roots. All of my carved pieces are created by hand and bear the marks of the chisels that I use. These chisel marks can create very beautiful textures and they can look so well under direct light. Hi, I'm Monica Fergus and I make ceramic fish and plankton wall sculptures in our studio back in Sale. I shape every piece by hand and paint every piece with its own specially mixed and layered glazes fired at varying temperatures. So each piece is unique. 
My pieces are inspired by the beautiful and amazing life in our oceans, which is under extreme threat from human activity. Plankton are the basis of the oceanic food chain, and damage to plankton has a cascade effect throughout ocean life. They are the main food source of so many creatures, including fish, squid, sea stars, and whales. Warming seas cause plankton to migrate to cooler waters so that the species which feed on them starve. The history of mosaics goes back thousands of years and some of these mosaics exist to this day. Testament to the durability and sustainability of the art form. The creative process of each of my mosaics contain the same key steps for the project to develop. I've been creating mosaics for many years and in my work I use repurposed materials such as tiles, stone, glass, crockery and various beads, pearls and even gemstones. The preparation of some of these materials can be time consuming in order to utilise them into the design for the mosaic. The base surface for each mosaic varies depending on the project. It can be anything from wood panels, furniture, ceramic and indoor or outdoor surfaces. I use the best, most sustainable, eco-friendly adhesive I can find, which is a low odour, solvent free and non-toxic. Finally, grouting is very important to complete the mosaic. Eco-friendly pigment powders are used to colour the grout and this will define how the mosaic will finally look. Outdoor mosaics need weatherproofing to protect the mosaic from the elements and so non-toxic, animal-friendly and irritant-free products are used. Any age group can enjoy the beautiful art of creating a piece of mosaic and it's worth remembering costs can be reduced by using repurposed materials. I hope you enjoy my pieces here today and be inspired to create a mosaic.